Hello again. We've previously looked at the difference between active routes and passive routes in EIGRP. Let's now consider what happens when a route goes active. So we're specifically going to look at the conditions that cause it to go active and what happens when that route does go active. So let's think about when a path, uh, let's think about what happens when a path to a route fails. This could of course be because of a broken link or perhaps a router has failed or something like that. So if the successor route is no good, it's failed for some reason, the first thing that EIGRP will try to do is rely on the feasible successor. And if it's got one, it'll immediately install that into the routing table. Now, please note that the feasible successor is a pre-computed route and it was accurate at the time it was calculated. But by the time something goes wrong, it may not be the best route. But either way, it will go into the routing table if it's available, and then EIJRP can work out the details later. Okay, so what happens then if there is no feasible successor at this time? Well, this is when we see a route go active. So when a path to a route has failed and there is no feasible successor ready to take over. So the router will respond to this by sending out a query message to all of its neighbors. This query message contains the prefix, it contains a delay, which is set to infinite. This is essentially saying, or well, the router is essentially saying to its neighbors, this prefix, I have a problem with it. Do you know anything more about it? Can you tell me if you have another path or if you know of another path through to this network? Now, there are various ways that a router may respond once it receives a query like this. If the query came from a router that already has the successor route to this uh, network, then the router that received the query will mark its own route as active. It will send the query downstream to other routers that it knows about. If the router did not come from a successor, the receiving router will ignore the infinite delay. It, that means it already knows that there's another path to the route and it will share that information. Or if it doesn't know about the, another route, it will immediately say, I don't know. So it's able to respond very quickly. So these query messages will propagate through the network until they reach a query boundary. So a query boundary is something that will stop the query and it can be one of several cases. One is if a router, it finds a router that is able to provide some sort of useful information about this network. Um, this is when the router can explicitly say, yes, I know about that. Or if the router can explicitly say, no, I do not have any information and I don't know anyone else who will either. Another case where we find a query boundary is when there's summarization in place. That whenever there's a summarization, queries will not pass that point. Ideally, finally, a router will receive a response of some kind back to all the queries that were sent out. When it gets all these responses back, hopefully it will have found an alternate path through to this destination network. If these, this router received a query from an upstream router, it can then respond to that upstream router about its query as well. The, ultimately, this route will either go back into a passive state, meaning that it's stabilized, it knows how to get to this network, or it will be removed from the routing table entirely because there is no backup path that can be found. This can sometimes be a bit of a confusing topic, so I hope that I've been able to explain some of this to you, make it a little simpler. Uh, if you liked it, let me know and come back for another video soon. I'll see you later.